Hi, today I want to tie a tiger stone with you. It's a pattern I developed to be a little bit easier to tie, um, particularly in smaller sizes. I've got a size 12 here with a, a black plastic bead. I've tied this all the way down to like a 16. So I've got some 60 black uni. And we're going to tie in right behind our bead. And I'm going to build up a little bit of a thread dam. Just so that bead doesn't slop around on us. And I'm going to stop roughly about a quarter of the way down the shank of the hook and remove that waste. And if you've seen any of my other videos, then you know that when it comes to legs and tails, I like to use flexi floss instead of the silly legs that you can buy because the, um, the durability of the silly legs that you can buy. Um, all marked up and is, in my opinion, very questionable. They break a lot really easily. So I'm just going to tie this um, piece of flexi floss in and I pull it towards me, keep some good tension on it, and when I let go, it kind of acts like a spring and it will help flare those fibers out run my thread to, oh, maybe a couple wraps past the bend of the hook. And then one wrap over that and our tail is good, nice and splayed. I'll run my thread back forward. Try to get nice touching wraps because we are going to use three strands of material, ultra wire, two strands of that, and a strand of French gold tinsel. So I've got that thread where I want it, which is about three quarters of the way up the shank of the hook. Now I've got a small gauge black ultra wire. I'm going to cut about three or four inches of that. And I've got a similar gauge copper wire. And then I've got a small gold French tinsel here. And I'm going to even up the tips on these materials. And then we'll just tie those in right on the side here. And you want to try to make sure that they don't twist and overlap one another as you tie them in. So that they stay parallel to one another. And you want to use touching wraps all the way down to where we stopped our thread at the bend of the hook a little past it. I'm just going to bring my thread down and then I'm going to bring it back up. Again, try to keep those wraps touching. You want to keep good thread tension. Keep that bobbin nice and tight, nice and short. And that thread will stay nice and tight, give you a lot more control over everything that you tie. really important. You can get away with a lot of things if you keep good thread tension, i.e. you know, not having to use some of the adhesives and other things that I see a lot of folks relying on and that probably aren't so great for our rivers. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to take a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers, and just gently kind of flatten this, this out a little bit and give us little bit of that flat stone fly look and take these three strands of material and again you don't want them to overlap one another which is can be easy to to do you want them to stay nice and parallel to one another 
And then just start wrapping this forward. Try not to catch the eye of your hook like I just did. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but you can if you're doing this at your bench, you'll start to see why this is called tiger stone. It's pretty apparent at this point. Just wrap over those materials. Always, I tend to always wrap in front just to make sure everything's locked in. Now that French tinsel will need to trim out. And the two wires we can gently helicopter off. Get rid of that piece. Get rid of that. Now while I'm here, that tail is a little long, so I'm just going to trim that. That looks nice. All right, so our next material is going to be a piece of thin skin. I'm not actually crazy about this material because it... Um, has a tendency to not keep its markings very well. So when you stretch it, which you need to do for this pattern, the markings tend to come off and what you're left with is a clear piece of plastic. You might as well use a plastic bag. Um, so I'm going to cut a strip of this. It's about an eighth of an inch. What I do if I've got the thin skin and I stretch it and the markings come off. Is just take a permanent marker and I'll redo some of the modeling on the underside. And that uh, pretty much takes care of it. In any case, I'm going to tie a strip of this modeled thin skin in and I've cut a slight taper. Push that away from the bead and just tie that right on top. And I'm just checking that distance. So I want to go back another wrap or two. That's good. Got some yellow dubbing that I've mixed. Um, number of synthetic and a little bit of natural and I'll add a little bit of um, dry fly dubbing typically to this just to make it easier to work with because you'll notice these really long shaggy fibers that's goat and I really like these long shaggy fibers they give a lot of movement to the fly in the water make it um, look fairly naturalistic breaks up the profile a little bit is what I want. And I'm just going to dub a little ball, not a not a big one. Cuz it's not actually a full segment. I just want a little ball of dubbing there. I'm going to take another piece of length of flexi floss and double it over it tight and then just wrap right over that. That'll give us two even legs. I'm going to pull this back a little bit, trim those. Those are perfectly set. Now I'll finish off this segment with a little bit more dubbing. Don't worry if those legs slide. We're going to wrap over them again. Should be good to finish up this segment. Yep. Pretty good. And finish up here. Pull those fibers back. 
legs look great. Bring this thin skin over the top. Down. I like to make sure, check, make sure that's right. Right down the middle. I'm going to just tie in front of that. And then we'll start, we'll do the same thing, we'll dub a little bit of this next segment, not the whole thing. And then we'll set our next pair of legs, and actually we'll set the middle and the front. So I'm going to take a longer piece of flexi floss. I think this might be a little short. Yeah, it's going to be a little short. So, I'm just going to take this piece. It's plenty long enough. Do the same thing. I'm going to double it over. Even up those tips. And I'm just going to bring this loop Make sure these fibers aren't twisted. Put this loop right over the right over the eye of the hook. And you can just wrap over that, like so. Make sure there's enough length for the front, and then we're just gonna cut that in half. And we've got well set legs. So that's a middle and a front set. Just holding these middle legs back. Make sure they're set where I want them. That fibers a touch too long. Get that out of there. Now we'll come back and dub the other half of this second segment. Typically in the smaller sizes, I won't bother with the three distinct segments. I'll just do it in one. Just dub a thorax, tie in some legs, and then just pull the thin skin over the top of the whole thorax. And the fish don't seem to mind at all. That would be probably in a size 16 that I'll be tying. And I'm just checking that. Looks good. So once again, come over to my thin skin and pull it forward. Checking it, making sure it's right on top where I want it. Pull it back, and then we can dub our last segment. And I always like to check underneath and make sure that I covered up that black thread, and I have. And there's a couple fibers facing forward here that are going to give me a little problem if I don't trim them out. So I'm going to get rid of those. And the rest of the fly, I'm going to keep them. And then we'll pull our thin skid forward for the last time. It's curling back on me a little bit there. Over that, I'm going to pull everything back, bring my thread in front, and that'll lock that thin skin in there. And we can pull it tight, and trim close. So you can see where I pulled this thin skin, it's starting to lose its modeling. 
that's what I was mentioning earlier. Just go in there with a permanent marker and mark that underside and um, you're back in business, but shouldn't really have to do that. And now we'll just come in and finish up. I'm going to check the head a little bit, make sure I've got any stray fibers out of the way. I'm going to come in with my fingernail and just help everything get behind that bead. Nice and tight. Let's see if I can get in here. There's a couple fibers I'm not happy with. Get those out of there. good. Now I want these legs to set just a little bit more forward and tie over them a touch. Come in there with my nail and just push everything back a little bit. Grab my whip finish tool. Lay down a three or four turn whip finish. Sliding off there, two, three, four, good and tight. All right, now just pull these legs forward. We're going to trim them even. Oop. And I'll take a little off of these. And, and what I like to do is come in with a marker. And just mark up these legs a little bit. Thanks for watching. I'm going to put a little head cement on this thread. Really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions or feel free to leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed this. It's a great little pattern. Really effective. Had a lot of luck with it. And hope to see you in some other videos. Give me a like or subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I'll catch you later on.